My name is Caroline Depatry, I'm the Associate Dean for Business Administration in the School of Business and Media, and along with Natalie Anderson will be your host today. We have an exciting uh, session, um, again, we're talking about uh, student clubs and the student association. I'll introduce our guest in a minute here. If you do have questions throughout, what we'll do is we'll probably go through um, about half an hour of delivering content, and then we'll uh, answer questions after. You can write them in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, although because there's very, um, you know, few of us here, you can also uh, chat with us in the, in the chat room. So our Summer Student Success Webinar Series, we're really here to help you, uh, new to BCIT, most of you be successful in uh, the fall term. Um, and again, the Tuesday sessions were mostly geared towards uh, PTS. Uh, your facilitator today, your facilitators or your guest um, are Susan Burgess. Maybe give us a little wave, Susan. <laughs> Susan is the Associate Dean for Digital Arts, Media and Design. So really excited to have you today. Uh, Susan, we have Mark Chiarello, who is the Associate Director for Global Relations, Relations and Looks After Marketing in the School of Business and Media. Hello, Mark. <laughs> um, then we Hello. have uh, Matthew, VP of Student Experience. I can't remember. Is that it, Matthew? Do I have this right? Okay. Uh, from the Student yeah, Association. Uh, thank you. <laughs> from the Student Association, or the SA as we call it. And Brendan Banks is a current BBA part-time student and a marketing intern for the School of Business and Media. So again, uh, thank you for the four of you for joining in. And Susan, I'll let you go take it from here. Great, thanks Carolyn. Hi everybody. Yes, yeah, so I'm Susan Burgess, Associate Dean for Digital Arts, Media and Design. My pleasure to facilitate tonight's session along with my, uh, my colleagues. Uh, this is the last of our session. As Carolyn said, it's on the BCIT Student Association, uh, including our student clubs. Um, we want you to know that even though the full term is largely online, um, that there are a full range of services available for you that you can take advantage of to help ensure that you're successful in your courses, your programs um, during your time here at BCIT. Uh, all students, all BCIT students, part-time or full-time, are members of the Student Association. So part of your fees go towards the Student Association. So make sure you take advantage of the services available from the Student Association. BCIT is uh, very lucky. We have a very large, very active association. Lots going on for you to take advantage of. So uh, Carolyn gave a, a little bit of an introduction. I'm gonna give it a little bit more. I'm joined by two very dynamic BCIT students and my colleague, Mark Chiarello this evening. So Matthew is completing his uh, medical sonography diploma through the School of Health here at BCIT. As Carolyn mentioned, he's VP student experience as well and was previously a student counselor. As part of his portfolio with the Student Association, he also oversees uh, clubs. So he'll be reviewing the services available and give you an idea of clubs that are available as well and how you can get involved there. We also have Brendan Banks. Brendan's a grad of our marketing uh, diploma entrepreneurship option, currently completing his BBA, as Carolyn mentioned. He's also been project manager with Enactus, which is one of our largest and most active clubs. So he's going to give you an idea from his perspective what the value is uh, as a student getting involved in clubs. And then, uh, and then uh, Mark Chiarello is Associate Director of Global Relations. And it's uh, thanks to Mark that we actually have a very, our school has one of the largest uh, and most varied global portfolios. So a lot of initiatives that are available through Mark's department, available to part-time students as well as full-time students. So he's gonna review those as well. The presentation part of our presentation, or sorry, the webinar this evening should be maybe about 20 minutes. Uh, and then we'll open it up for questions after, and uh, then I'll ask Carolyn to wrap it up. So uh, as Carolyn mentioned, the webinar and PowerPoint slides are available um, on the Student Success webpage. So, so uh, please feel free to go there afterwards if you want to review what's been presented this evening or let others know um, of this material. And with that, I'll pass it over to Matthew to review Student Association Services. Thank you very much, Susan. Um, I, uh, I just like to, uh, to start before I get into the services that we offer at the SA to just uh, uh, speak a little bit about who we are as an organization. Um, and we're, we are a student-led organization. So myself and um, 
11 other students. Um, we sit on the board of directors and we help um, guide the, the mission and the mandate of the SA. And uh, really our, the, the purpose of the SA is to provide students uh, with services that benefit their experience at BCIT. Um, and that's, uh, you know, no matter which school um, the student studies in or, or the campus, um, we're trying to provide uh, services that improve um, their life, especially to, um, you know, uh, PTS students. All of the services that we offer, um, they're accessible to PTS uh, students. And now that the services have been transitioned to online, um, there's, you know, they're equally accessible in, in every way to, to no matter what type of student um, you are. So today I, I'm really going to focus on our advocacy uh, and health and wellness services, except as well as our career and entrepreneurship services and um, a variety of the different clubs that we offer as part of the SA. Um, we recently, lo recently launched a, a new website, which is at the bcitsa.ca. And on that website, you can find all the details about um, the services that I'm going to touch on today, as well as um, other services such as childcare, the dental, health and dental plan that we offer, as well as different awards and bursaries that you can apply for as a student. So our, our, our goal really is to enhance your student life. And I really strongly encourage you to take advantage of all the services that we offer in this online term. So starting with our advocacy department, um, advocates, they provide a confidential service to students um, and students often reach out towards our advocates whenever there are issues that or concerns that come up, um, you know, usually with their academic studies, um, you know, such as within the, uh, the grading methods that BCIT um, uses, as well as sometimes instructors uh, and program heads. Um, and they really provide guidance on the students' rights and responsibilities um, while studying here at BCIT. And they are, they're a great resource because they can provide, um, you know, a review of this, the situation the student finds themselves in, and they do that in an impartial manner. Um, and then they recommend uh, next steps and possible solutions to the student. So it's really all about empowering the student to be their own voice and advocate for themselves and, and find the right path that they want to choose. Um, I, I personally know our, our advocate manager, Danielle. Um, she's a fantastic person and she's got such a uh, level of expertise with the different BCIT policies. Um, so she can be reached um, you know, at advocacy at bcitsa.ca. Um, so feel free to, to reach out to the advocacy department um, throughout your time at BCIT. Uh, onto our wellness, uh, health and wellness services. Um, so this is designed to provide a range of programs for the diverse student body at BCIT. You know, whether you're in um, you know, health science, the trades, or in the School of Business. Um, these uh, programs, they really target the eight dimensions of health model that we use. Um, and those are listed just on the slide. Um, and some of the programs that we offer currently online um, is nutrition coaching, financial um, awareness as a student, um, to name just the two of them. Um, and we have a variety of those services that they're all listed on our website. Um, and they're run by uh, Kelsey and Andrea. And you can connect with them at wellness at bcitsa.ca. Um, so career services um, is an especially important um, part of the role that the SA plays because being a student at BCIT, you're studying to, to enter the industry um, once you graduate. And this is a great way to, to help students transition from you know, being in the classroom environment to connecting with uh, industry personnel uh, and professionals to jumpstart their career at the moment they graduate. Um, so they host um, career-related workshops as well as industry mentorship um, and also the peak leadership program. There's also a, an entrepreneurship service that the SA offers. And again, all of these services are, have been transitioned to being online for this term. Um, and as uh, you know, students in the School of Business and Media, we have a career specialist who's um, you know, specific to this school. Uh, her name's Thule Tran. And um, if you have any questions about the, some of the services that they offer, or you would like some um, even coaching on uh, the different aspects of your, your industry that you're about to enter, then she's an amazing uh, contact person. Yeah, and if I can just highlight as well, I can't echo enough how important it is to get involved um, early with career services. There's a, a full range of um, um, 
services, initiatives that are available to you. So as a PTS student, uh, take advantage of this. Many of you I know are looking to perhaps change careers, uh, launch a new career, and um, I always encourage students, don't wait until the end of your program. Um, connect early with the student association and the activities that they have going on and with the employers um, that they have available to you. Don't wait to the end of your program. Okay, Matthew, back to you. For sure. Um, so uh, as Susan mentioned, as part of my role at BSA, um, I help support BCAT clubs. And, um, you know, a question that's, uh, you know, quite often asked is, uh, like why and how can you join a club being a student at BCIT because it's such an immersive um, program and it's oftentimes quite challenging um, you know it's really a time commitment and you need to be able to find that that academic balance with your personal life but there are some amazing reasons why you should shoot you should consider joining a club um, being involved in the BCIT community is honestly it's an extremely important part of your experience at BCIT um, and in an online term, clubs really help connect you with your peers and other people in your programs. And looking past your program to graduation, it's a great way to network with your current peers who may one day be your future colleagues. Um, the, a lot of the clubs that we're gonna mention a, a little bit further on, um, they really are, are focused on um, you know, enhancing your resume with extracurricular activities um, as well as social activities. And this is a great way to complement your education uh, in the classroom or virtual, virtual classroom with um, you know, something extra in your life that really balances out that experience at UCIT. Um, so within the School of Business, we have a, a variety of program specific clubs. And um, it's worth noting that every, every student at BCIT, they're able to join, um, you know, all the clubs are accessible to, to, to students no matter what your program of study. Um, but there are a series of clubs um, that they, they really are targeting their experience towards students in particular programs. You know, to name a few of our larger ones, the Marketing Association, um, JDC West, they, they're very active and, and well-known clubs. And especially in Actus, uh, which Brendan was gonna, is going to talk about his experience within that club a little bit yeah. later on. Um, so in this, uh, you know, online fall term and, and looking forward to the next one, um, the SA is supporting clubs in a variety of ways, uh, and uh, as well as um, our Kickstart uh, Student Services and Clubs Fair. Um, so that, that just, uh, the first one happened earlier today, but there's three more that are a great opportunity to learn more about clubs if you're interested, as well as the other student services that we offer in, in greater depth. Um, and you can uh, uh, register for those uh, on our SA website. Um, and essentially the, the virtual booths will be offered and it'll be, uh, there'll be a person that'll be there to support any questions that you have in a, like a one-on-one -on -one setting. So it's a great opportunity to do that um, with SA personnel. Um, the Microsoft Teams platform uh, we recently launched, again, it's really meant to support clubs and help them communicate in an online term and organize events um, with each other and collaborate with different clubs. The SA also um, provides clubs with initial funding for newly sanctioned clubs, as well as ongoing event funding, which really helps clubs to um, you know, host those extracurriculars and make the students in their club have a greater experience at BCIT. Um, and finally, the Clubs for Community Initiative, um, that's new this year, and uh, thanks, Susan. And it, it is going to be running from the 15th of September uh, to November 30th. Um, so myself and our club program coordinator, Carly Watson, um, we've been working on this program, which is really meant to help clubs engage uh, their current members and recruit new ones uh, while helping in the local community. Um, and some of the events that um, will be, uh, the activities that are gonna be offered through this program will be virtual and at home with a few select activities that are in person with some of our partner organizations. Um, such as the Greater Vancouver Food Bank and Canadian Blood Services, for example. Um, the purpose of this program is to help clubs through, you know, promotional media with our student association and provide them with some extra funding for events um, in the 2021 term. Um, so if you do join the club, then keep that in the back of your mind because it's a great opportunity to, to do things as a team as part of your club. So like I mentioned before, uh, Carly's our club program coordinator and she's uh, 
uh, she's one of the principal contacts for for club questions. So if you're looking to um, you know join a club, maybe even you want to start your own club because you haven't you haven't seen that on the website yet, um, then she's a great person to connect with, and she'll have a lot of answers for you there. Uh, myself, I'm the vice president of student experience, so I also work with uh, clubs um, and I assist with um, uh, sanctioning new clubs as well as providing them with uh, event funding. Um, so I think that uh, that concludes the slides that I have. So I'll, uh, let's see here. Pardon me. Um, so specific to part-time students, I forgot there's one more slide here. I just really wanted to emphasize the fact that um, part-time students have access, the same access to essay programs and services that a full-time student does. Um, and it's really important as a part-time student um, to take advantage of that because just like full-time students, um, you pay, you pay fees, I believe it's about half as much usually as a full-time student, but uh, your, you know, your rights are to, to gain access to these services. Um, and I really encourage you to do so because that's um, you know, part of being a student at BCIT is to be part of the essay. Um, and I hope that you'll be able to access these services this fall and make your experience here a great, great time. Yeah, and I just wanna echo that as well. Uh, about two thirds of our students at BCIT are part-time. Um, so you're certainly not alone. There's a lot of you and um, uh, Matthew's gone through a full range of services there. So please make sure you take advantage of them during your time at BCIT. Now I'm going to pass it over to Brendan to give us a student perspective on being involved in clubs. So two years ago now, I came to BCIT and I decided I want to get uh, highly involved with a club. And so in high school, I was never involved with anything. And so I knew if I was going to go back to school, um, I was going to get involved. And so I talked to a few friends of mine and heard about this club called the Nactus. And on the first day of school, I went to the club's day, um, which is happening right around now um, online. And I went to the Nactus booth. I spoke with the president and realized it was a club that aligned with my own uh, values and goals. And so a few days later, I went to the general meeting and realized there was a spot open for a project manager position. And so I, I applied and I got the position and, uh, and I've been there ever since. And so just a little background, Enactus is basically a club that focuses on sustainable initiatives, um, so social sustainability, um, social responsibility. And so the, the project that I run is called Raw Solutions. And basically we create solar dehydrators, which is the device that dehydrates fruits and vegetables using the power of the sun. And the idea behind it is that by dehydrating fruits and vegetables on developing country uh, farms, the farmers will be able to uh, reduce their waste and also resell this produce as a secondary revenue stream. And so um, we started it two years ago. And then last year, I became the vice president of the club, as well as project manager. And then this year, I passed off the vice president role, but I'm still the project manager. Uh, next slide, please. And so there's a ton of opportunities that um, like everyone has in clubs. You learn a lot of new skills. I remember on the, in the first month of class, we were learning uh, how to write bad news messages and messages um, like proper emails to clients in communications. And I was the only one in the class that was actually doing it with the club and getting the real life experience um, instead of just like while learning it in class. So I thought that was kind of interesting um because i saw the benefits right away there's a ton of networking opportunities um, I, i've met people from all around canada all around the world um, big businesses sponsor a lot of these club events um, there's job opportunities there's resume building opportunities um, and also you can meet a lot of friends some of my best friends i've met through through clubs and i know that as well for for other clubs i've seen friend groups emerge and they're still great friends today um, generally not many part-time students get involved in clubs, but right now is actually the perfect time to get involved because everybody's online. It'll make it super easy to get involved and you won't be missing out on anything in person because all the meetings are online as well. Uh, there's also lots of travel opportunities with clubs. Next slide, please. And so, uh, in the past, Enactus has gone to London, England for a world's competition. We were supposed to go to Amsterdam this year for Worlds, but obviously it got canceled. 
We go to Toronto every second year, Vancouver, where we are right now, every second year, and Calgary every year. And then other clubs as well, like um, the Marketing Association goes to New Orleans every year, and JDC West went to Saskatchewan last year, but they change up where they go every year. So if you want to get involved in clubs, I definitely recommend getting involved. Um, you can spend really as much time as you like. There's positions for everybody. But if traveling is the main thing that you want to get involved in, then I'll pass it off to Mark and he can talk about our global opportunities at the School of Business. Great. Over to you, Mark. Thank you, Susan and Brendan. So <laughs> tonight I won't comment on Saskatchewan. I'll leave that for another night. <laughs> but in terms of um, the global, global opportunities within the School of Business and Media, um, all of our programs are actually open to part-time students as well. So you do not have to be a full-time student to take any one of our programs. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually talk about these programs in um, order from the, the longest to the shortest. Uh, so I'll start with the double degree program. Um, obviously, as the name suggests, to, to be part of this program, you do have to be in our either our BBA or our BAC program, full-time or part-time. And what this program does is it allows um, students to get two undergraduate degrees with one extra year of study. So that's one academic year of study, so two terms. Um, currently, we offer this program um, in Austria, Belgium, and uh, Germany. And we plan to bring three more programs on, um, hopefully by 2021, uh, including our first in Asia, which will be in Tokyo. Another interesting thing about the double degree program is that uh, um, some of them, such as the one in, in Belgium, um, also inver involves work integrated learning. Um, so what that means is that it's one academic term or one term of courses and one work term. And that work term can be completed anywhere in Europe. It doesn't have to be in Belgium. It can be in France, Spain, uh, Germany, Italy, wherever, wherever you would like to complete that program. Uh, in terms of costs, no additional costs to the double degree program. You're just paying your BCIT tuition. Uh, the only cost that you would incur, of course, would be your living expenses. Uh, the second uh, or the middle point there, uh, exchange is your typical mobility um, program, the programs that you would find at all uh, universities, research universities. Um, and basically what that means is that uh, students from our partners come to, to us at BCIT and you would have the opportunity to go to any one of our partners. Um, for exchange programs, we have 20 different partners in 16 countries, um, primarily in Europe, but we do have a couple um, in South America, uh, one in Africa and Asia as well. Again, this is open to part-time study students, but you do have to be within or uh, be part of one of our two degree programs. <coughs> and excuse me. Uh, the first point there, the summer field school would be the, the easiest, if you can use the term, easiest program to get involved with. It's basically a taste of international education. And this is a three to four week program um, that uh, combines some study with travel. Um, so we're running, hope to run three programs in, uh, in the summer of 2021, COVID permitting. Um, the first one mentioned there, Austria and Italy, is our longest running program, our most successful program. It sells out every year. And we are currently, by the way, accepting applications for all of these programs. So you can go online, download the application form, and send it back to the email address listed. Um, Belgium and the Netherlands, uh, 2021 will be the first time we run that program. It's new to our office. And in Japan, it'll be about the third year, I believe, we're running that program. And that's primarily based out of, of Tokyo and Osaka. So again, as what this program does is it combines a little bit of, of study. So you do a bit, bit of lecture in the morning and we do company visits because we are a praxis-based institution. We're a polytechnic and then cultural excursions in the afternoon. Uh, evenings and weekends are generally free. In fact, on weekends, we encourage you to go um, travel on your own just so you can experience more of Europe or, or Japan. And we also have some programs which aren't listed on this slide and I'll quickly go through them. Um, we have degree completion programs. Um, so for anyone that might be in um, the marketing area, for example, we have a, the opportunity for you to complete your degree in, in um, the UK. Um, we have master's bridges. So for anyone who would complete our undergraduate programs, we have two uh, partner master's programs in Austria, one for the BAC and one for the BBA. Um, and we also have a program which is a, could be of particular interest to part-time students called the Global Business Studies Program. This is a program that requires international travel in order to complete the credential. Basically, the academic component of BCIT is similar to the first year of any one of our traditional business programs, so not um, digital arts or, or, or broadcast, but anything in SE6, if you will, uh, marketing, accounting, or any one of those programs. And then 
two overseas uh, components. So it could be two exchange terms, a field school and an exchange term, basically any two overseas components. So after the completion of the academic component, the two overseas components, um, one would be qualified or one would earn um, the Global Business Studies program. And the last thing that we offer is more of a service. We have program advisors um, within the School of Business. So if you do have any questions about, especially if you're an international student, any questions about either the localization programs open to you um, or any type of questions whatsoever, um, please feel free to make uh, appointments with our advisors. Um, because of COVID, we're currently taking appointments um, virtually. So we do have those um, time slots available online and we would be happy to help, help you or answer any of your questions. Um, next slide, Susan. That's the next slide. Uh, the Global Ambassador Program is a volunteer. I'm sorry? So that's the next slide. So the Global, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, I didn't see it before. The Global <laughs> Ambassador Program um, is basically a volunteer program that is open to, again, everyone, um, both full-time and part-time students. And basically, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to gain some interla international experience while still being a BCIT. Um, you would help uh, promote our programs. You would help. Um, um, recruit for our program, set up for our networking evenings because we hold our own industry networking nights within the Global Relations Office. Um, as the slide suggests, it also improves your communication and presentation skills because we do ask you to present on our programs. Um, it expands your network, which is something that's very big at BCIT, as you would already know. The other thing that this program does is we do give you first um, access to any one of our programs, um, such as the field schools and other summer um, summers programs. An example of that would be the University of Venice offers us three spaces in their summer program at uh, no tuition. And uh, we offer those three spaces to global ambassadors first. And of course, given the fact that there's no tuition, they usually take all three of those spots. So if you are interested in volunteering, we do give you a statement of completion at the end of the program, assuming you meet the minimum hours. Um, if you do want to expand your network and gain some international experience while working at BCIT or while studying at BCIT, um, this actually is a program that I would highly recommend. Okay, the last slide, Susan. There we go. I so basically what this slide does is it, it just quickly illustrates some of the benefits of international experience. Um, one of the things that you wanna do, you've come to BCIT because you either wanna improve your job or you wanna find a job, a career, launch your career. One of the things employers do look for is international experience. In fact, just about 70% of all students that have um, studied over, over, um, overseas or abroad said that the experience has led to a job offer. It is definitely one way to differentiate yourself, especially in the ever increasing or ever uh, increasingly global um, economy. Employers do look for international experience. I know that myself as an employer, I look for international experience. And I'm quite happy that I have international experience. And I'm sure Susan would say the same as I know she has international experience. Uh, you learn things um, while studying overseas that you just can't learn in Vancouver. Um, uh, being someone that created one of our programs, the Italian Field School, and someone that has led it for eight years, um, I know that I have seen, or and I do continue to see, a definite transformation in our students from the beginning of the program and the end of the program. In fact, I would suggest it's probably one of the most transformational programs um, that we have at BCIT, and I would strongly encourage um, each and every one of you to gain some type of international experience. Uh, in terms of seeking uh, more information, you can visit our website. And we do have all of our programs listed there, as well as all of our contact information. Um, if you do have any questions, I would welcome you to contact any one of us. Uh, um, we're more than happy to take your questions and, and walk you through our programs and hopefully um, encourage you to sign up for one of our programs. So that's, that's basically all, of I all I have to say on our opportunities. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, so that's it for our presentation. I hope we've given you uh, lots to think about. Um, as uh, we've all said, Mark, Matthew, Brendan, there's lots of reason to get involved as a part-time student. It's really up to you. Uh, take advantage of the services available through the student association, the clubs, the global opportunities that Mark's outlined for you. Um, let us know how we can assist. Um, and, uh, and we really hope that um, you have a wonderful time here with us at BCIT. Uh, Carolyn, over to you for questions. Yes, sorry, I was muted again. One <laughs> question so far. It's a question from Mark. Hi, what from MJ? What particular city in Austria for the summer field school? 
Okay, well, thank you for your question. So the Aust it's actually Austria, Italy. We combined two countries um, for that program. We start in Vienna. From Vienna, we move to Trieste. From Trieste, Vicenza. Vicenza, we go to Venice and Milan, and then we end the program in Bologna. So we actually see a lot of cities on that program. Um, it's a very, very good program. And one thing that I forgot to mention uh, when I was discussing the field school, that the field schools are actually open to anybody 19 or over. You actually do not have to be a BCIT student. So if you know someone who might be interested in coming with you and is, does not attend BCIT, they are more than welcome to apply. Very good to know. Um, any other questions from our attendees? I wonder if Brendan, Mark, Susan, um, or Matthew, if you had any last words of wisdom before the start of the term. <laughs> Enjoy the term. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think, you know, in one of the sessions um, earlier this summer, um, actually the president of the SA Hunter was here and, and, and one of his, um, you know, tips was to make sure that you all look after each other. You know, in COVID time and during pandemic time, we're all going through various things and then you bring in school. So, so make sure that you look after your classmates and look after each other and support each other. I think that's going to be really, really um, important. Yeah, and for part-time students, reach out to your instructors. Mm -hmm. um, if you want advice, assistance, they're your first, uh, first line of information. Um, each of our departments has a part-time studies coordinator. Um, so they're a great resource as well. If you're not sure who that person is, ask your instructor and they'll be able to connect you and then uh, connect you through to more resources as well. We really want your time here at BCIT to be successful for you. Absolutely. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm so all excited because there's a question here. <laughs> Two questions. Oh, my goodness. Um, I don't know if this is relevant to this session. We'll see. Part-time uh, students can or cannot have medical or dental services. Matthew, that's for you. Um, I'll be able to uh, just briefly answer that question. So the details would be on our essay website under the health and dental services page. Um, but essentially, as a student at, at BCIT, um, every student's required to have um, a level of coverage for health and dental. So if you already have, um, you know, co coverage through, you know, your family or, or your work, for instance, then you'll be able to opt out of the coverage once you provide that proof. But um, if you come to BCIT without that coverage, then um, you would be required to, to pay into that program so that you have um, coverage throughout your, your program. And Matthew, that's even if you're like taking a few courses or what if you're like um, a part-time, part-time student? <laughs> um, or do you need to do a certain amount of credits? It does, it does depend on the amount of credits. So, um, you know, depending on your situation, because part-time students, there are a variety of different like levels of part-time studies. Got it. Um, so that would depend on, you know, your, the specific courses you're taking in program. Yeah. Um, and if you have any questions that are you know specific to that, then the best place would be to take a look at the the website and then connect with one of our um, the staff members um, you know through through there. Okay. And I know you probably mentioned it before, but the website is to BCIT student. What's the website again? Uh, BCITSA.ca, and it's recently been relaunched, so it's uh, you know very interactive, and I think it's an amazing new website. Yeah, I noticed that. Is it like recent, like the last few days? Um, uh, I believe it's two weeks. Two weeks, two okay, weeks yeah, because I just noticed the last few days, but okay, so BCAT SA for Student Association, um, just to have, have a look. Thank you very much for this answer, uh, Matthew. And then uh, maybe for anybody on this panel, is there a link uh, for the list of clubs? Where can you find, I know there's a page on the School of Business and Media, I think. But, yeah, the, um, the, the full list of clubs, I can um, provide that um, to you in the chat. Yes, there is a, a specific page on our website for that. Wonderful. Okay. So that will be provided, MJ, that will be provided uh, for you in the chat if you want to have a look at that. Okay, so I think we'll uh, maybe let everybody go early so we can have an early uh, dinner. Thank you, MJ, for your message in the chat. That's really nice. Um, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna answer this here. I think that's it. Uh, so thank you again, everybody for attending. It was, it's always so nice to have uh, people outside, you know, uh, people join in and have guests on these webinars. So thank you to Mark, uh, Matthew and Brendan who joined us tonight and Susan, thank you very much for leading this session. You're gonna be an expert next year when that topic comes up again. That's great. That's <laughs> you're already hired. I won't need Matthew next year. <laughs> <laughs> you're, already, yes, you're already hired. Matthew, um, President, and Brendan, thank you so much to both of you for getting involved and Mark. <laughs> you're so welcome. Um, I also wanted to remind uh, that there is the school business that ha does have a student success um, information page that you can have a look at, as well as the Student Office Life has started a student success hub page. So there's many places you can go to get lots of information to be supported. Um, so listen, have a great term, everybody. Reach out if anything's needed. We're really there for you and to support your success uh, in your courses. So thank you for attending. And I think I'll leave it at that. Be kind to yourself and others and uh, have a great term. <laughs>